In this video, I'll show you how to set up your website so that it's multilingual using the free G Translator plugin. Hey guys, what's up? This is Michaela from Simplifying Websites. And before I get into the tutorial, I'm going to ask you to like this video, which helps the channel grow a lot, and to subscribe to the channel. So that's it. Let's get to the tutorial now. So come on, guys. I'm here on the Innovare Nutrison website which is an institutional website that I taught you how to create with Elementor free. I'll leave the link here on the card and in the description if you want to learn how to create this project, okay? I've already made a video about it here on the channel, including with this same plugin, but it's been updated with other cool features, and I wanted to update the video for you. It's very easy. Just go to the WordPress admin panel, Plugins, Activate New. You'll search here in the search bar, like this, G Translate. All together, it's this plugin here, okay? There's a very similar one, even from the same company, but it's this plugin here, WordPress with G Translate. There's this one and it's different. This is the one we want, okay? Click on Install and then Activate. Pay attention to the name because sometimes the little photo, their logo here changes, so always go by the name. Then click on Activate. It usually redirects you to the Plugin Settings tab. If it doesn't, hover over Settings and you'll see G Translate. Click on it and you'll be taken to the Settings page. Here, you'll see a preview of the widget. If you don't see everything in Portuguese, it's because it pulls in the language you've set up in WordPress. Just go to this second tab and configure it. It may be, for example, in English, all the settings here. Then just change it to Portuguese and it'll be easier. So, here we can configure the style we want the language settings to be. So, here's the float, which is this little floating flag. You click on it and it will appear like this. There's also this one, which is a drop-down list. There's also this one, which is a pop-up. So, you click on it and a pop-up appears. There's another one here which is a drop down list with just the name and it'll look like this. There's this other one which is the little flags. I really like this one because it's very intuitive. It has the flags in a language drop down list. There's the flag and the name of the language. There's just the flag and the language code. That acronym. It has the language name without the flags. There's just the language code. And there's this one which is the coolest thing about the updates they've brought out, which is the little globe. You click on it and it appears like this, all the languages. So, if I were to put it on the website, I'd put either this one with the little globe or this one with the flags, because it's very intuitive. We don't need to change the rest here. There are some default settings. If you're using WordPress without Elementor, you can activate it here in the menu. As we did with Elementor, we won't use it, We'll activate it by a short code. Here you can change the size of each flag, and here you can change the style of each flag. So here's what it looks like. Then you can change it to the other one, which looks like this. I'm going to change it to this 2Ds, which I think looks more elegant. And here you can select which languages you want to appear. I'm just going to leave Portuguese. I'm going to deactivate all of them here. I'm just going to leave Portuguese, English, and Spanish. I'll disable the rest. And then there are some additional settings, which is, for example, the United States flag for English, because by default they leave the English flag here, if I'm not mistaken, this one. And then you can change it to the US flag. If you think your audience is going to be more from the United States, you leave it here so that English is the flag of the United States. Portuguese is the flag of Portugal, then you can change the flag to Brazilian Portuguese, which is here. Spanish, there are options for Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia. So if you think your audience is more from Mexico, you can leave Mexico. You can make these alternatives here. Then after that, you'll come down here and click on Save Changes. Okay, then you just have to go to this tab. There will be the short code, which is this one. Then copy it and place it wherever you want. It's best if we put it either in the footer or here in the menu. Then you can go to the site where you created your menu. This site here I made with Elementor free. 
So it's menu, I can hover over Elementor and click on main menu here. If you have Elementor Pro, you'll be able to do this too, okay? Just click on it and it'll take you straight to the menu template. I'm going to go to the library and get the shortcode widget. I'll put it up here after the social media icons. Your social network's over here. Then I'll come here to it. I'll paste the shortcode. I'll click here on update. I'll come here to advanced. In standard width, I'll let it be customized. And I'm going to change its size so that it looks good here with my layout. I'm going to update it. I'm going to access my site here so we can see what it looks like. It looks like this here. And then, if you have, for example, if you've added a lot of languages, you'll come here to the width and you'll decrease the width, you'll increase the width, and you'll configure it in Elementor so that it looks good for your layout. I realized that it didn't look good that way. So I think it would be better if I put it here before the widgets. I'll update it. I've changed it. That's it. It looks like this. Just click to change. So if you want to switch to English, click here and it automatically changes the entire website, all the text on the website to English. Remember that it uses Google Translate itself, okay? So there's no way you can change the text here. It will take the change from Google Translate. Then here I change it to Portuguese again and here I change it to Spanish, okay? It will work the same way here on the computer or on the mobile. Then remembering that on mobile, you need to come and make the spacing settings here so that it fits your layout. So for example, I can come here, put it on my cell phone and make it here at 100% width. I'll update it so that it's not just in the corner. Then it will be here in the center. Then it will stay here in the center. Then I'd have to come here in the container and leave all the widgets aligned here in the center so that it's right here in the center. Okay, let's test the little world one too because I'm curious to see if it's going to look good. Well, I'll leave the globe one here and save the changes. I'm going to update it. Look, there's the little globe here. You have to click on it and it appears here. This little globe would look nice if we made a pop-up. So you can create a pop-up with Elementor or another plugin. And then you put this little globe in so that it's floating. Or if you put it in the footer. If I leave it in the menu. It didn't look very good in the header, at least not with this layout. So I'm going to leave the flags alone as it looks nicer. Here's another cool configuration we can make. Has two nice options here. If you don't also want to use the shortcode to place it here or to make a pop-up, it has this option here to show the floating language selector which itself creates a little pop-up. Then it lets you place it here at the bottom, at the bottom of the screen, left or right, or at the top, left or right. So for example, I'll put it at the bottom left. You select it and click on save. Then we'll update it here so we can see. Then it keeps floating down here, so we don't have an option here to change these colors to make these changes to its layout only if we do it via CSS. He leaves us a custom CSS tab here if we want to change the colors and sizes of these items. There's a video here on the channel teaching basic CSS and HTML if you want to learn how to change this. And there's also this option here that I thought was really cool, but I'm going to leave it disabled, okay? I think it's best to leave it in the header. I'm going to leave this one on because I thought it was really cool that it automatically switches to the language of the browser. That way, when someone accesses from another country and their browser is already set to English, for example, they'll already access the website in English, they won't even need to change it. So this makes it much easier for the user, and we can make it active to make life easier for website users. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like on the video, 
subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media. Cheers, see you next time, bye.